Hello, I'm Judith Polgar. I would like to welcome you all, and I'm here again to discover more about the chess composers community. In this episode, I would like to introduce you a very special guest from Holland, who is a collector, but he collects chess compositions. And he collected during the decades quite a number of them, which is nearly 90,000 during those decades. He's main editor of International Endgame Study Magazine. He's international judge for endgames and feeder master of study compositions. But by profession, he's veterinary diagnostician. Please welcome Harold van der Heyden. Welcome. It's nice to have you here. Thank you, Judith. Uh, I'm very curious about the journey you did during these decades. How long are you involved and you started to have a collection? What was the journey and why are you so passionate about that? Yeah, right when I learned uh, how to play chess in the, in the early 1970s, uh, I was interested in endgame studies uh, that I saw in books or magazines. And uh, when I was a, still a teenager, I had a chess, uh, in the chess magazine, I had a column uh, with the title Endgame Studies and Problems. So I was uh, already interested then. Then about 10 years later, uh, the Endgame Study uh, community in the, in the Netherlands was founded. And someone held a presentation about collection of uh, Endgame Studies on cards. And uh, I was really interested and in, uh, well, I had such a small collection of under promotion in endgame studies on cards. And then the next day I decided uh, to put those into the computer because uh, in that period, uh, Chessbase had released a new program, the database program, which also had a, f a feature to, uh, to enter positions. So I just entered all my cards, there were about 300 or, or something. And uh, when I finished those, I, 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 I thought, why, why should I not collect everything? So that's what, when the journey started, and uh, that was the end of the 1980s. We got in contact with each other through the Chess Artistry Competition, which is part of the Global Chess Festival for 2021. And you were kind enough to have and give your support and check the anticipations because of your database. You can do all this work, even though it takes quite a lot of time of you, I'm sure. But you have all the knowledge there in your computer and in your database. So how did you find uh, these, uh, these examples? And what do you think about the quality and uh, the ideas and the artistic value of this uh, competition? Yes, I think the, the tourney was of a high level, so uh, there were many good compositions. Uh, and what I do is, uh, because of course the, uh, the studies have to be sound, uh, so uh, the white mu must only uh, be able to win in one way, and uh, against every black def defense. Um, that's one part of it, uh, so analytically sound, but it also must be uh, original, so uh, the, the same ideals combined must not have been found uh, by others. Uh, for the first, I used my computer, and uh, um, um, and for the second one, I used my database, which allows to find patterns, uh, ideas. Well, for instance, very simple example is a, a certain stillmate position, which is quite interesting, and if it's if it's fully new, uh, nobody has used it before, it's, it's, it has more value than a uh, stillmate position, which was used by someone else. But, but still, that could be a good study if there is a, a different play or there are two stillmate posi positions, for instance. So it's not a black and white uh, thing. Uh, so I, uh, when I do this, for instance, for this tournament, uh, I, I make a list of all the studies I think that have similar ideas and then I send that to the judge and I, uh, always say to the judge you must decide whether, whether it, it's a significant anticipation or not. Yes, we have to say and explain a little bit what anticipation is, is when someone 
made it before previously that exact idea or very similar to that right actually i ran into this because i made a very beautiful uh, study with the king and pawn end game and i was extremely proud of it i was still talking when uh, paul banco was still alive and uh, and uh, he was supporting me. He said, wow, it's a fantastic, uh, great study composition. And then when I contacted you, you reminded me that you don't want to be the bad guy, but just for your information, there wasn't uh, someone doing exactly the same with the mirror on the other side. Still, I'm very proud of my study because I made it out <laughs> of my game against Alexei Shirov. After that, I came to the idea to make it a little bit uh, special and add some of uh, extra ideas into it but of course i had to understand that decades before my study was done it was actually done by someone else uh, how many studies did you make yourself about uh, 150. wow and what is the 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 best thing about it for you what would you highlight which part of creating and composing is the most satisfying for you? Yeah, but I think uh, that is uh, 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 that that must be in a study is always a, a surprise. Uh, that's a, that's the main thing. Uh, there must be a surprising move, or, or the whole idea must be surprising. Um, um, and of course, there are many other aspects. But uh, well, uh, if I find find an, uh, an interesting idea and I try it, and then I try to add an introduction to that, um, which must be more or less in in flow with the uh, with the main idea. Um, uh, and if it if I manage to to make such a composition, and it's sound and it works, and uh, I'm I'm glad with it. Like you told, you were very happy with your. Uh, uh, study you composed then that's what, what i feel uh, about it that's i think it's nice okay so we started to talk about your studies and ideas and progress and process of it so let's get the chessboard out here on the screen and show your fantastic study can you tell me a little bit about the study it seems to be extremely simple only very few pawns on the board at the same time, you really put in some twist into this uh, very simple, but at the same time, very nice study. Well, the, um, uh, as everybody can see, this the win in this study must come from a pawn breakthrough. So one of the pawns is sacrificed, and then the other goes to promotion. And I was um, uh, writing an article at the time from my magazine about uh, pawn breakthroughs. But those studies, studies all, all had many pawns and were quite complicated. So I thought, why, why are there not simpler positions? And uh, of course, when one could create a simple study with a pawn breakthrough with, with this material, but there must be a surprising move. So after a lot of trying, I arrived at this position. And uh, uh, well, it, it is uh, very simple, and so I uh, often use it, uh, showing it to people uh, that are new to composition and ask them to solve it. And um, there are only a few legal moves, so everybody can solve it um, uh, just by elimination. And uh, uh, But also grandmasters, when they see, find the solution, they like it, and uh, so it's quite uh, nice, I think, myself. Well, okay. let's first try the, the most obvious move, uh, uh, e5, but like just captures pawn and then when the pawns run and uh, to promotion and in the end uh, there are two, uh, two queens and the position is a draw. So this is not a solution. E5 is not the solution. G5 is also not possible because uh, then black takes and uh, after king h3 black goes just king h3 yes tries and to black, push the pawn uh, yes and attack so instead of e5 and g5 there is a move which is done which is absolutely 
irrational. It's no logic into it. It's the most, uh, it goes against your intuition 100%, right? You normally, yes. in an end game, your king goes forward to the center to move forward to capture your opponent's uh, pawn. At the same time here, something very special happens, and actually it's becoming a tuk -tuang. Your beautiful move playing king h1. So in this position, black has several options, but let's start first what happens if just black wants to attack both of the pawns on g4 and e4 at the same time, forcing white to sacrifice one of his pawns. But white has to be clever and sacrifice the right pawn, right? So he goes e5, takes g5, e4. Everything seems to be that it's similar what we had when the king was on h2 and the black king was on f2. But still there is a lot different because now there is the winning move as white can go king g1. So it's important that for the moment the king is far away from the white pawn. It cannot catch it. At the same time, white can catch the e4 pass pawn because right now if black goes e3, white can simply move under the pawn by playing king f1 and reaching out to e1 square while the g5 pawn is a runner and nobody can stop that one. So this is why king f3 is not possible. This is why black is trying to make another move in order to wait white how to progress. Because of course, if white goes king h2, then that would be only a repetition. So now white has to discover how to make the breakthrough. What has changed? And we're going to see what has changed because, again, we have a running race. White queens first, black queens second, and now the beautiful, very pure queen g2 checkmate. I think it's a, it's a, it's a very nice one. It's a very uh, clean and clear with such a few pieces on the board. Right? King h1 is amazing. It's not something very easy to find uh, in a practical game. When did you make this uh, study? Did you win a first prize with that? Uh, no, I, uh, I, I uh, made it in uh, 2003 and uh, just published it, it in a local newspaper, a Dutch uh, newspaper. So. Well, I think it's very instructive uh, for kids and, uh, and generally for players to understand that sometimes intuitive play cannot lead to success. Sometimes, rarely, you have to calculate and everything has to be completely precise, accurate, and there is only one way, which is uh, unexpected, but that works. Okay, so this was the wonderful uh, study by you. I liked it very much. I want to ask you, what do you think, what is the future of, uh, of chess studies? Do you think we are going to have more studies, more study composers, youngsters, new generation coming in? Yes, I think so. Um, uh, uh, because the, um, uh, also with the, the advent of the computer and uh, uh, also not very strong players are now, well, since two decades or so, decades or so but uh, uh, it is possible for them to, to make uh, the compositions correctly uh, much easier. So we see a lot of people that, uh, that join the community. Every, every year there are uh, new names um, and, uh, and also very young people uh, 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 start to compose. Um, uh, sometimes there are very strong players, uh, even when they are young. But um, uh, well, for instance, they, I, th I also think they like to uh, to uh, solve endgame studies uh, because it helps them um, to sharpen their tactics in the endgame. And uh, uh, so you, uh, they use it part of uh, as a training, and then get interested. And I think that's the reason why uh, why we see new youngsters every year starting uh, chess composition. 
you know uh, thousands maybe tens of thousands uh, of studies probably you went through of them uh, more or less how many active composers are out there right now uh, well if uh, if i just look, sort all the names in my database there are about four thousand names so but there are, um, well, I think perhaps a thousand comp composers that have more than 100 studies. Well, that's not possible. Uh, well, a few hundred uh, that have a considerable output of uh, about 100 studies. So. Mm. And who is your favorite? Uh, my favorite composer is, uh, was always uh, Leopold Mitrofanov, uh, a Russian composer who died uh, some decades ago. And in the recent years, it's uh, Oleg Pervakov, also from Russia. And um, well, he is an excellent composer, a grandmaster of chess composition. And um, uh, well, he has always very new and interesting ideas. And uh, one of, of my, my favorite study is one, uh, is a study that he composed uh, uh, some time ago when uh, I, I organized a, uh, attorney for my 50th birthday he won first prize with it and uh, well it was a very excellent study and uh, i remember then uh, when he both is at a conference in italy about chess composition he both both there i talked to him uh, and i already knew that he had won first prize but i couldn't tell it yet, uh, him yet so then he said to me well i sent a study to your tournament i said well that's uh, that's nice <laughs> and then it said, I hope it will end high because I consider it my best composition ever. So he won first prize and I think, well, that it's really his best composition ever. So, yeah. Well, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, we have out there quite a few incredible composers and Perbakov is definitely one of them. And... Uh, well, are people using your database for solving a lot? Do you know if many grandmasters, amateurs are solving, practicing with that? Uh, I, uh, I presume it, they will, but um, uh, I, I'm not uh, sure. Um, uh, most of the people that buy the database uh, use it uh, that are study composers who want to know that the study was not used, uh, uh, not uh, uh, anticipated. Um, and but some other people use it for training, just playing through the the end games and try to solve uh, certain positions. Um, so I think about uh, half of the people that that uh, have my database. Uh, are comp composers and the other half are uh, chess players. So if you visualize uh, your database in a decade from now, what do you think, how many more? Are you going to be passing the 100K? It should be, it's, uh, well, I, um, it, it grows by about 7,000 uh, every five years when I issue a new uh, update. So when it's, uh, then it should be before 2025 that I pass the 100,000 mark. Okay, well, thank you very much for sharing your thoughts and congratulations for, uh, and thank you for collecting so many uh, chess studies so everybody who wants, they can enjoy uh, all year around practically. And I wish you good luck with your passion and collecting further. And thank you very much for your help in our tournament, the Chess Artistry Competition for this year. It was a pleasure to do and thank you for the interview. Thank you. I hope our audience liked this beautiful study and uh, we'll pass it on for the next generation and teach them and tell them why chess studies are so good and gives you joy, happiness and fun. See you.